Hi, this is the last video on discrete random variables. We're just going to deal quickly with the binomial mean and variance formulas that are given to you on your formula sheet. Uh, this is uh, pretty simple. If you imagine you have a uh, binomial random variable, let's say it's about a team that uh, plays 10 games, let's say at home during a given season, and they are expected to win 50% of their games. Let's say that uh, that satisfies the binomial random variable, the four conditions we learned about in the last video. So x was a random variable with binomial, n equals 10 and p equals 0.5. Well, how many games would you expect them to win in a given season? That's pretty simple. If you've got a half chance of winning any game, you play 10 games, you'd expect to win 5. So the mean, the expected value is just 10 times 0.5. If you played 20 games and you had a quarter chance of winning any game, then once again, you'd expect 20 times a quarter, you'd expect to win five games during the season. So the formula for the mean is just n times p for a binomial random variable. For the variance, a little bit harder to derive, but here's the formula. n times p times 1 minus p. I won't derive that here. Those two formulas are given on your formula sheet. So if we look at this random variable for tossing a coin three times, and x is representing the number of heads that we get. To work out the mean and variance, we could go through the process that I showed you earlier. The mean is 1.5, the variance is 0.75, or it's just much easier to use the formulas, recognizing that the number of heads that you get is a binomial random variable with three trials, and the probability of a success at each trial is a half or 0.5. So the expected value, or the mean, is n times p, 1.5, the variance n times p times 1 minus p, 0.75. Two quick examples. We've got four blue balls, six white balls in a, in a bag. We're going to th draw three balls at random and with replacement. So the binomial distribution is works fine here because we're replacing the balls each time, so the probability would remain constant. So the values of n and p, n equals 3, and P is 4 tenths. The number of blue balls is 4 blue balls and 10 total, so 0 0.4. The expected value of X, N times P, 3 times 0.4, which is 1.2. And the variance of X, N times P times 1 minus P, 0.72. The standard deviation of X is the square root of the variance, which is 0 0.849. Last example. The random variable x has a binomial distribution. We've got a mean and variance, and we want to find the values of n and p. So we're kind of going backwards here. The way to do this is by solving these two equations simultaneously. The mean, n times p, is 18. The variance, n times p times 1 minus p, is 12. Easiest way to do this is substitute this value, n times p equal 18, into this equation here. So you see we have np in the second equation. Replace that with 18 which gives us this equation here. Hopefully you can see how I did that. So I've just substituted in the value of 18 for NP in the second equation. I now divide both sides by 18. You could expand the brackets here, but it's easier to divide by 18. So 1 minus P is 2 thirds, so P must be 1 third. Once I know what P is, N times P equals 18, so Something times a third is 18, times both sides by 3 here, n is equal to 54. I just wanted to look at a question where this idea of working out the probabilities using permutations and combinations really comes into its own. It's really good to recognize these kinds of questions. Uh, here we've got a situation with a vegetable basket with 12 peppers, 3 red, 4 green, 5 yellow. We're taking 3 peppers out at random without replacement and the number of green peppers is our random variable here. Now, this is worth five marks. This could take you five days if you try and draw a tree diagram. It is much easier to recognize it. Here's the time where I can use, in this case, combinations. So let's just say if we wanted to work out the probability of getting uh, two green peppers. So from our four, we want to choose two, so four C2. There are eight other different colors. Out of those other eight, we want to choose one. So eight C1. So we've got four choose two times eight C1 on the top, divided by the total number of ways this can be done is 12 C3. 
Out of our 12 pe peppers, we're going to choose three. That's the probability of getting two green. Much easier than working out using a tree diagram. Much, much easier.